Hello and welcome to this preview of Teradata Possible 2023, which is going to be live from Orlando, Florida on October 2nd through the 4th and live here on the Cube on October 3rd. I'm Rob Streche, analyst with the Cube, and I'm excited to be joining, joined by Teradata's Chief Marketing Officer, Jacqueline Woods. Welcome, Jacqueline. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. G glad to meet you and virtually at least and kind of get to learn more about Possible. I'm excited to be joining you down there in Florida where it'll be a little bit warmer than us in the Northeast here. So really a lot of fun. So let's kind of jump into it. And why don't we explain for everybody that's watching what is Possible? Because it's an event series and there was more than one of them. And this one just happens to be in Orlando. Possible is an event series that we created actually in 2022, where we first started talking about how businesses were evolving and thinking about their uh, businesses coming out of COVID and, and really what did that mean? How were they retooling themselves, rethinking and really planning for the way forward? 2023 is an extension of what we started in 2022 further thinking about how do you fuel your future for growth and fuel the future is the title or subtitle of possible. So it's really thinking about those things that businesses think most about, which are really three things. The first being how to improve your overall business performance. It's kind of standard. That's, that is what we wake up and do every day. How do we think about improving performance so our businesses can grow. And how does Teradata help you think about that and, then, and ultimately help you do that with our technology? The second thing is deepening customer engagement, which not just coming out of COVID, but just the paradigm shift that we've had as a society, just in terms of deeper, more personal integration, whether that is B2B or B2C. And I like to think of it as a friend of mine and fellow CMO has quoted before, we are all in the business to human connection. So there isn't this hard line of business to business or business to consumer. And what we do is think about how do we help our clients and customers deepen their engagement with their consumers or citizens, or what did that look like? How do they drive better business outcomes by doing so? And then third, but certainly not least, how are businesses really thinking about innovation, which could be around new products or processes that they are implementing across their enterprises and how Teradata can help with that? No, that's, that's great. I, I think one of the things that also might be helpful is who, who's really the target audience? Who should be attending? If they can't get to Orlando, obviously they can watch us on the third when we'll have a lot of the executives and some of your customers on board. Uh, but who should really be watching and who, who should attend if they can get down to Orlando? Uh, we have like what I would argue is three core audiences. You know, first it is who will benefit from this information, which starts on both day one and day two from the business orientation, the business paradigm. And that is line of business leaders, uh, data scientists and data officers, digital officers. How are you thinking about the paradigms or inflection points that your business is at in working in partnership with your IT constituents, such as CIOs, IT leaders, and chief technology officers. So those are really kind of the three audiences that attend possible. And there's something for all of them, starting with the business solutions and how do we think about those business solutions and then breaking that down further to how does our technology help you help those business leaders solve their most um uh, compelling business challenges that they have today. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. I think that, again, data teams are very heavily integrated into the business now and understanding what the ROI out of your data is super 
important uh, to you know really hitting your company's KPIs. Uh, with that, you know, being said, you know, what are organization? What can organizations expect from the conference? Kind of what are what are the themes uh, next week? Uh, first of all, it it always starts with data. How are people thinking about their data and using their data? And we think that there is an inflection point in the way people need to think about data analytics and insights. And the time is now because of all the conversations that are happening around artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, you know, deep learning uh, and generative AI. Those are all things that are paramount to enterprises understanding their data, understanding their data lineage, how to harmonize their data across the enterprise. How do you use it, not in a silo way, so that the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. And those will be some of the conversations that will be happening next week. Yeah, I, I, I love that because I, I think we talk about data platforms and data teams, data product management, uh, data, I guess you could say data developers now as well, because I think it, it's such a great time to be in the space that Teradata is in. And you, you guys have the lineage, have been in this space for quite some time. Uh, and in fact, I, I kind of took a look and you have some pretty impressive speakers from multiple different companies that are customers of yours, like Unilever, Telefonica, Unum, and more. Uh, what, what are some of the, you know, what should organizations expect to learn from these speakers and others that are going to be there? I think it's always great to have uh, customers and real life examples of what people are doing with our technology, which participates and there isn't a monolithic technology that solves all problems. These are uh, really, I think, difficult and complex problems that we all face and they require multiple participants in an ecosystem to solve those problems. And so you'll hear from some of the hyperscalers and some of the SIs that are our partners as well in addition to working with with Teradata. So you'll you'll see um, not just here is just the Teradata story by itself, but how that Teradata story integrates with our cloud service providers that, that you know well, uh, whether that's Microsoft, AWS, or Google, um, and, and others. And really understanding when you think about other applications that ISVs have and how does that also integrate with our technology to deliver specific solutions to customers, you'll hear some of that as well. And you'll hear what I think is really most important is really the success that our uh, customers are having utilizing our platform to really focus on the business paradigms that their companies have and how they're driving better business outcomes with our technology. So I think those are some really key points and attributes that you'll learn about and then on the third day, we really go deep. Um, there are a lot of very specific tracks, specific technical tracks that uh, many developers and others with a strong technology background would want to be hearing and have an interest in. So I just think a, w a really well-rounded set of uh, days in Orlando next week. Yeah, I, I love that, that you have uh, a little time for the business, a little time for the people who want to geek out and get really into the weeds. That, that's great. I, I think that that helps bring it you know, full circle so that people can go back and have implementable aspects from what they've learned at possible 2023. But I'd be remiss, and I think we'd get kicked off the interwebs if we didn't talk about AI you know, AI is all the rage, and, and Teradata had an announcement just uh, earlier this month. Uh, you announced Ask.AI for Vantage Cloud Lake. What's the role, or what do you see the role of generative AI in the enterprise, and how is Teradata really helping organizations with that? Well, first of all, I think 
Teradata, that first and foremost has been using uh, AI and machine learning before it became all the rage in the last eight to nine months. Uh, so these are, are things that we have been working on. We did the acquisition of Stemma, which is really focused on understanding and using large language models and how to uh, further use that for your enterprise's benefit. Um, and Ask.ai leverages that type of technology to help you actually build your models and your queries faster in our product. So again, the the notion of of AI or or something that or an assistant within AI is something that's going to help you do something better. I think that's the benefit that people have, whether they're starting to kind of experiment and just understand the uh, benefit of even a large language model and how in understanding and ingesting certain types of information can just get you to a, a quicker answer faster. But with some of that comes, you know, what I think is most important, and that is the responsibility that you have to have around AI and generative AI. And we like to use the term trusted AI, not responsible AI. People are responsible. They have to be responsible for what they do with this technology. It is very powerful and important and can benefit all of us. But what you need to be able to do is to have responsible people who build trusted environments that we can all depend on for the betterment and, and not to speak lofty, but you know, for mankind. Because I just really think that at the end of the day, we fundamentally believe that people thrive when they're empowered with better information and that we are very intentional about our product and our platform helping you to get to that better information to help your consumers, your citizens, the constituents of your company thrive and survive. Hey, I think that's so true. I, I love the trusted AI versus responsible AI. I think it makes total sense, uh, especially with people looking for transparency and other things. And you know, I, I also like the fact that you call it possible, which is a very optimistic and a very outwardly uh, positive way of thinking about the future. Uh, I, I gotta say one of the better names that I've heard for a conference. So kudos to you guys and uh, I really like that. So, you know, super exciting stuff, Jacqueline. I really wanna thank you for having me down there next week and for joining me today to kind of give a preview of what's gonna happen in Orlando next week and you know what people will be able to see on the cube and on the interwebs as well as they attend possible 2023 either in person or virtually thanks for coming on board thank you can't wait to see you all right same here i want to thank all of you for joining this preview and i look forward to bringing you more analysis with my analyst colleague rebecca knight live from teradata's possible 2023 in orlando on the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage. Thank you and see you soon.